So I'm guessing that for the majority, you would like to hear about what does honours actually mean to you and, and what opportunities will it uh, provide? And, and we can cover those in the slides. Uh, more generally, uh, I think we can, I can go out on a limb here and just talk about what honours and what, and what honours can actually mean to your career and really get at this question of why would you do honours? And there's, um, there's uh, different perspectives come to this when, when people are thinking about why they would like to be doing honours. For some of you, you'll be thinking about a career in research and honours is a great pathway to doing that. But for others, you'll be thinking about how uh, will this give me more opportunities in the workforce? And we strongly, strongly believe that it will, uh, that that fourth year actually just really builds on the foundations that you've, you've um, developed in your undergraduate career. And it will provide with, a, with an extra set of expertise that you can take into the workforce and make you extremely competitive when going for the jobs that you're after. So you can see that people are, are, are wishing to do honours from really two different perspectives and the course caters for both of those. Is there anything you'd like to add, Kate, okay. on that end? That's okay? Yeah, okay. So with that in mind, I'm gonna just open up a PowerPoint and share my screen with you. Can you just let me know if you can see this? Okay. Yeah. It's okay? Okay, great. I sort of have lost you at the same time. And, and please just uh, ask questions as we go along. So we've got, what we've got is we've got two streams of honours. We've got an honours in ecology and environmental science and an honours in evolution and paleobiology. But we run these in tandem. And, and both Kate and I are overseeing both of these components of the honours course. And, and what, what we've got, and, and the way in which the course is developed, it's developed in two parts. So whereby the first part of the semester is spent uh, thinking yes about your, your big thesis project, the project you're going to do in your honours, but we're going to help you along that road at the same time. So we're going to provide you with opportunities to, to do a literature, literature review. We're going to give you the opportunities to present a seminar to, to both your uh, fellow students and also the department and get feedback on that, uh, providing you with, with the necessary uh, feedback in terms of project and, and project development. And there's also, we'll be providing support through the Honours pro Program in the form of a technical report. So these are all accessible items, but they're items that will actually help you tool up, skill up for doing your thesis component of the project, which is done, of the program, which is done in the second half of the, the, the Honours year. Uh, and, with, and on top of that, there are some broadening exercises that we have as part of the honours program. And here, it's, a, it's about listening and thinking about concepts that you may not be addressing in your thesis. And here, well, what we've set it up is that there's a series of talks online that we ask you to listen to and critique, but do it in a, in a way in which uh, you would be writing something like a popular science article or um, or an infographic or even the, or and also in terms of a government report so what we 're really trying to do is we 're trying to broaden the skill set that that you get through this honors program so 
So what, what, what will you get out of an honours program, a program project on an honours year? Well, it really depends on you. And, and as I said, you have these opportunities to really hone your skills in terms of literature reviews and, 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 and searching for different, uh, searching through the literature for, for different ideas and concepts on the basis of your project. Uh, it will help give you a stronger understanding of how to design and manage data and also give you a stronger understanding of experimental design or, to, or give you an, a stronger understanding of what it means to be in a lab type environment. Of course, depending on your projects, you obtain data using various techniques. Uh, it will allow you to hone your skills in writing essays and, and writing a seminal piece, which is your thesis. And of course, it will it'll provide you with a greater expertise in analyzing data and, and reporting results in the form of a manuscript, uh, which will, is not dissimilar to how we go about writing our work up for scientific publication. And, and there is, well, in some instances, we have seen projects go through to publication into a scientific article. So it really depends on the project, it depends on you, and it depends on, uh, on what you organize with your supervisor. And I think this is a really big one also. It's not just about the project itself, it's about your role in a department. And I understand that it's harder at the moment with the COVID situation, but there will be opportunities for you to participate either face-to-face -face or via uh, virtual means such as Zoom into, into the departmental seminars that we're having. So our departmental seminars are now going online and you'll have that opportunity to be a, be a part of the science that is being done in the Department of Ecology and Evolution. And also what you'll find is as, as you join different groups at the university, so the group that's, uh, that your supervisor manages, that you'll have the opportunity to, to participate in things like lab meetings, journal clubs, and many of the social activities that we run through, through the university. And as part, of our, as part of our group. So for example, in my group, we meet regularly, even during this COVID crisis uh, via Zoom and, and we run our lab meetings like we would normally be running them face to face. So those opportunities will be made available to you through that lab group type environment. And, and it also means that you can interact with academics around the department uh, especially as, as, as those opportunities start to be able to come back onto campus. And it won't be just uh, interacting with uh, academic staff, it'll be also interacting with PhD students uh, and, and of course your other honour students, your fellow students, the cohort passing through. And, and we really put a, a strong emphasis on this uh, interaction between the honours cohort. So you're feeding off each other. And, and that's the way in which the best science is done and some of the best work is done. And I've got down here attending seminars. So at the moment, there are no face-to-face -face seminars, but we are running Zoom seminars and they've been moved back to Friday afternoons. And it'd be good if you could start attending those if you sign into the Honours Program. Uh, in terms of assessment, so we can sort of work through this also. Uh, there's a literature review and a research proposal. So what the idea here is, it's about really uh, providing you with, uh, with, I suppose, the ammunition, the, the really strong understanding of the background literature for your research project that you've chosen to do and you've worked with, with your supervisor to develop. And, and what it means is that you're, you're really familiar with the literature uh, prior to doing any form of field or experimental work or data analysis. And when I was doing my masters, uh, one of the, the, the heads of the department there told me really that one day in a library can be worth a year in the field. And I suppose that's what we're trying to do here to make sure that you've really got a strong understanding of the back, background literature before you go and, and throw yourself into your project yourself. Because you never want to, because what you don't want to find is that you're either reinventing the wheel or you've missed some really important detail. And that's really the basis 
for that side of the, the assessment. Um, and then of course, uh, what it also does is it provides us with a vehicle for developing scientific writing. Now there is an initial seminar, as I said, and, and this is really there for your benefit. So it's, it's your opportunity to discuss this project, this endeavor that you're going to go on for in front of your colleagues and in front of the departmental staff. How are we going to do this next year? We have not worked, this, this, this semester coming, we have not quite worked out yet, whether that will be done via Zoom uh, we'll deal with that later in the semester. But the one way to look at this is that it's a great opportunity to get feedback on, on, on the project that you're considering doing. Because then by then, by the time you give this initial seminar, you will have sat down with your supervisor, discussed the, the, the intricate details of the project, and, and then you'll put it forward to, to your fellow students and people like myself, Kate, and, and other departmental staff, and we're there to give you um, some good feedback and, and on, on how to make sure that this project can be done successfully in the period of an honours. Uh, in terms of the technical report, this, this here is extremely helpful for students. And, and the feedback that we've had from honor students since setting this up has been really good. And what the idea here is, is to, to think about your project, work with one of the skilled academics here and, enter and, and try and, and develop the statistical approaches that you will use for analyzing the data before you even start collecting or generating that data. So what it means is that when it comes to the end of writing, the, analyzing the results and writing the thesis, you already have a fair understanding of the approaches that you need to use for analyzing that data. And you have quite a strong understanding of the tool set needed to analyze that data. And we don't have the broadening essay anymore. And what we've replaced this broadening essay with is a series of talks. And, and what we ask is that the students think about choosing a couple talks that are outside their field of expertise or uh, field of direct interest and, to, you, and to, to listen to these talks and then critique these talks. So the aim is for it very much to be a broadening exercise. And then in terms of what we ask you to do is that we ask you to, to generate uh, reports in the form of popular articles, uh, an infographic, and, and also a report that you may give to a government official. And we will run a tutorial on how you go about developing these different things. So again, it's about trying to, to broaden what you get out of this honours and what the skill set that you can take either into, re into further research or into the workforce. And in the, in the, the second part of the, the honours uh, program, we have the thesis itself. And this is the, 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 um, the project component of, of the honours program. And here it's about doing a piece of independent research. And this can mean many, many different things. It can mean uh, collecting field data. It can mean going to the lab and generating, generating data. It can also mean analyzing data. And this will, and, and how this, uh, this takes place will very much depend on the project that you've discussed with your supervisor. Uh, we, say, we, we recommend that, the, or we, we put forward that really that the project will take about 22 weeks of full-time work. So it's quite, it's quite a lot. And, and this will result in your thesis, of course. And there will be a final seminar to go with this and, and whereby, again, really it's, it's, it's opened up to your fellow classmates and to some of the staff members to come along and to give you feedback on, on how it all went. And if there, there, 
there were some problems or, or bumps along the way? How possibly if you did the same sort of thing again in, in a PhD project or a project in the workforce, how you would deal with those sorts of problems? And that's what that's all about. So the role of the supervisor and, and I suppose the relationship with, uh, with you and your relationship with the supervisor is really critical for, for making the honours, your honours year a success and the honours project a success itself. Uh, it's important that you've got good dialogue with the, the supervisor and this is something that you can be thinking about as you go through and start choosing your projects and we'll move on to that in a moment. And, and I suppose in, in many ways, the supervisor is there to, to, to really manage the project side of things and, and for you, the supervisor, and, and for the coordinators, Kate and I, to have a dialogue to make sure everything's going along well. And what we try and recommend is that there's weekly to fortnightly meetings with the supervisor. And so our role, Kate and I, is really to, 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 to make sure that everything moves on time. And we're a, we're a soundboard if there are problems uh, for you. And, and, and we're also there to help ensure that, uh, that the project uh, milestones are met and also the other milestones regarding other assessment items. And I suppose this is, we'll finish on this slide and then we can talk more generally and open it up to discussion. I suppose, what, how do you get the most out of an honours year? And this is, a, it's, it's a, there's no doubts that there's a, there's a lot of dedication and hard work that goes into it. But I also believe that there's a lot of satisfaction that comes out of the honours year also. Uh, both in terms of being able to have some ownership in the project development but it's also about satisfaction in seeing your skill set grow and, and, and feeling confident that you have the ability to, to, to go uh, into the literature, to review the literature, you have a stronger understanding of statistical techniques and you, and you can bring these all together, you can integrate these to take command of a project and do the analysis. So I'm just gonna, that's it for the PowerPoint. Uh, we can, I can take some questions and then we can sort of talk about how do you go through with a touching base with a supervisor, enrolling in the honours program, et cetera. So I, I, I can now see people, so feel free to do this verbally. Do we have any questions? Hi. Um I've just got a question about um, when you can do honours. I mean, like, I assume that most of us are graduating at the end of the year, but if we decide to pursue jobs and then go down a research path later and have to do honours later, is that um, something that you have to do straight after um, undergrad? Or, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but... I, I, I think that's an excellent question and I would assume that you don't, but I'm also going to try and confer with Kate and possibly Hope. Sorry, the question so was... I can repeat the question. So the question Sorry. is, if you're... If you're, if you're finishing at the end of the year and then you actually decide, and you might go into the workforce for one to two years, and then you decide that really, maybe the workforce wasn't for me, that a research career is what I really want and I'd like to go and do a PhD. Do you have the opportunity to come back after yeah. and sort of defer honours and then do your honours a couple of years later? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I think that there is, um a maximum of five years. Uh, and if you are after five years and if you complete it, you need to apply for a special permission, but it's not a problem. Okay. Thanks, I've had a lot of referrals this year with the COVID situation. Would that um, have people that have done that in the past 
have they found it more difficult than um, people going straight in from undergrad or do they find that um, the break um, and the real world experience focuses them better for doing honours? Worth asking previous students, but I've had quite a few honours students now and I see a difference in students that have gone into the workforce and then come back to study because they have this real appreciation of um, you know, the, the diversity of tasks that they're engaged with and the excitement of discovery and the privilege that it is to do to do research. You know, there's a much stronger appreciation of the, the educational opportunity um, in students that have been in the workforce. That's my observation. What do you think, Hope? You've had more students than I have. Yeah. Uh, my, my experience is that sometimes students may be a bit coming back after a while. They may be a, rust, a bit rusty on the status, mm -hmm. but it's a bit of a trade-off, and as you say, yeah, the, the experience you gain um, in a few years in the workforce can very, very much help you to progress in other ways. I can talk from my own experience. So I took a, a year off before doing a master's. I, I spent the time in a number of volunteer organizations. It was sort of research-based. I wasn't sure what I wanted to, to spend my research career working on. And I used that time in that way to try and really hone what I wanted to do and then came back and did my master's. Mm. I think there's also a danger that it can, study can lose personal relevance if you leave it too long because you know you might your family situations change and um, your financial commitments change and so I think that, that is something that happens um, with PhD students it can be harder for them um, to focus and commit um, in their 30s compared to say in their 20s just because they have different um, family and sort of financial circumstances. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's really useful. Cheers. Uh, how big is the research write-up at the end for your project as in compared to like a PhD? Because I've seen a lot of theses with PhDs and they're absolutely massive. Obviously, they've got three years as opposed to a year working on that. But what is the size approximately? I, I quite like the way that we do it in um, ecology and evolutionary biology because we, um, unlike the other department we have you write up your thesis in the format of a research paper a standard research paper so um is there a word count hope i'm trying to yeah I would say the length would be one chapter of a phd project mm. so it could be about the third and the fourth and also the level of sophistication in your ecologically or evolutionary understanding is not expected to be as high as for a PhD student. So my understanding, okay. Gope, it's capped at 10,000 words, isn't it? Um, it's, yeah, it's about, I, I can't remember in words, but it's yeah. about 40 pages. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we're recipe. believers that if you can write concisely, you should write oh, yeah. concisely. So it doesn't have to be 10,000 words, it can be less than 10,000 words. And we find these days when we're writing our scientific papers, we're writing shorter and shorter papers. And really on average, we're writing papers that are somewhere between three to 5,000 words. Okay, that's good, because I write really concisely and I struggle to reach the word limit, so. No, there's no, yeah. it's, about, it's about the science that underpins the project, not the word length. And, and, and you'll find that you'll have figures and all these sorts of things to really sell your research and your research findings. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Pleasure. Do we have any other questions? Um, I was just wondering if there uh, is opportunities to have supervisors from other organizations, say SARDI, yeah, so my, my understanding here, and I'm happy to be corrected, is that that's not a problem, but you need to have a principal supervisor within the department itself. And you'll see that a lot of honor students uh, in this cohort and previous cohorts have ha do have multiple supervisors, mm -hmm. and these come from government organisations often. Yeah. No problem. Uh, responding to Jenny, um, if you want to take a year off, you can apply now and then start in a year time, but there is no advantage in doing that. Um, I think that 
um, usually it's important to make sure that the project is available and still relevant. So you can apply closer to, to the time where you are going to be starting. Does that answer your question, Jenny? Um, I was just wondering, is, can you possibly do a mid-year entry for honours as well? Yeah, no, you can. So the, the mid-year entry is, is what uh, it will happen in the next couple of weeks will be a mid-year entry. And then, of course, there could be a mid-year entry in 2021. Cool. Thanks. If I'll post the link on in the chat window for the mid-year entry information. Do we have any other questions? Uh, just a comment. I, I strongly suggest people start talking to supervisors because that's the best way of knowing what projects are there, uh, what interests you. There are lists of projects available, but also there may be some ideas that you may have about the potential project. And the supervisor may say, oh, yeah, that's a cool idea. Let's do it. Um, so the more could you talk to supervi potential supervisors, the better. And I'll say something on top of Hope. That I couldn't agree more. The list that's up on the website is somewhat outdated. And so it gives you only an indication of what the researcher's interests are. And you really need to touch base. You can't. And... One thing don't do is don't go through the portal and apply for a project that you've seen on the web without discussing this with the supervisor because the supervisor needs to give support for that application. So you need to tee up a meeting and mm. speak to them face or via Zoom at the moment. Yeah, and don't feel committed once you've done that. You know, there's lots of opportunity to change project and change supervisor after you've had an offer. So don't, you know, don't hesitate yeah. on on submitting an expression of interest just because you're not sure what project and exactly which supervisor you want to work with. Yeah, I, I agree with Kate there. And, and what I've seen in the last few years of my experience within the Honours Program is that students do shop around and they should shop around because they need to pick a project that they're really committed to yeah. and will be able to invest a lot, a lot of energy in over the, the 12 month period of the honors program. Yeah, and one, one point I always want like to, to emphasize is, don't think that the project you do in honors is going to be what you do in the rest of your professional life. Honors is really about developing skills. So you want to find the best uh, environment for you to develop those skills. Uh, a project you are passionate about, of course, but also a good supervisor, someone you can talk to, good support available, is all the package. So if you are passionate about sharks and there are no projects available about sharks, but it's something about minnows, and you are happy to do that, go for that, because then you may work, uh, work your way to you know, your research career on sharks. But who knows, there may be a sharks project out there too. Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's right because the I mean one the thesis component is just one part of the honors program and the other is as I've been saying it's it's an opportunity to skill up so it may be that yeah you're interested in the sharks there's no projects on sharks but you may realise that you need to tool up or refine your skills of analysis of mark recapture data or something like that that you know that you could be really useful if you want to be for example a wildlife ecologist either as a researcher or within the workforce so i think it's about thinking a little bit beyond the study system and the focal species if there is a focal species yeah and, and think about developing your network as well as anthony yeah. suggested having a um, an external supervisor from government or industry is provides really fantastic opportunities to to start building that network and uh, and building the career skills that you need to to engage effectively outside of academia um how early should you uh find a project say if you're thinking of doing honors like in january next year I personally believe that you should have the conversation, as Hope indicated, 
quite early. So I would be having it in early second semester. It just allows for you to build up a dialogue with the with the supervisor to refine those ideas and to make sure that you really want to work together on that idea. Yeah. Spend some time chatting with that supervisor's other students and postdocs. Yeah. Yep. Getting a feeling of the, the research environment and the support that, that will be available. Let's see, yeah, I agree totally. And even potentially come along to a virtual lab meeting and see how they run and the topics that are discussed. Mm -hmm. So the earlier the better. Mm. I, I often have um, potential honor students come to my um, lab meetings or um, even volunteer in my research group and you know sometimes they stay and do honors and sometimes um, it turns out they're interested in something else and I can help link them to that or or they find their own way there so there's there's absolutely no problem in in making contact it doesn't commit you um, and you might find yourself in some some interesting discussions Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I've got another one. Um, I was just wondering if um, you should have like a really strong idea of what you want to do now um, or develop that or look into it in the next couple of months. Um, yeah, just because um, I think if you're sort of just looking for honours to, um, because you're not sure what else to do, and then you end up with a project that you're sort of not really interested in. Um, oh, sorry, I did not. Oh, no, that's it. fine. I, th I think I, <laughs> that, that's enough. I think I understand. Yeah. I, I believe that you should spend the time just thinking about the areas that, that at least you're interested in for an honours project. If you, if you find that you're sort of interested in all fields and can't quite work out which one you would like to potentially specialise for a period, it's maybe put it on hold for a couple of months and slowly work through that in your mind, but then take, but then still reach out to supervisors and express, you know, you're interested in potentially doing an honours project. What does it mean in their research area to do an honours project? And that may even help you sort it out. So what I'm saying is take a little bit of time to think through it, but still don't hold back. Still go and talk to people and you're not going to lose anything here. You're going to have a good conversation always and be able to talk about some good science. So there's no loss in doing that. And at the same time, it may actually help you refine your ideas and cement what you want to do. Okay, cool. Thank you. Pleasure. I just wanted to add to that, Natalie, because you were saying that you were thinking of maybe going to work for a year. If you do decide to go that way, you could still do a summer research at the end. So at the end of this year, do a summer research in an area that is potentially something you're interested in. Because I did that last year and it made me much more aware of what I do and don't like when I'm coming to research. So I've now got a much better idea of where I'd like to go just by doing that six week summer research. Okay, cool. Yeah. I thought that was only open for like second years. So I'm not sure if I'll finish at the end of this year, whether- I I'm... met a honours student when I was doing it who did it at the end of their undergrad and that's how they got their honours right at the last minute. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. I'll look into it. I think some of you, um, we, we hear a lot about research and well, career passion. Um, you've got to find your passion in life and, and that's, part of the meaning of your life as if it's like a romantic relationship there's one thing out there for you and you've just got to to find it and I think that puts a lot of pressure on you at this stage in your careers I think I prefer to think about developing or growing um, your passion and interests rather than stumbling on it or you know shopping around and and finding it I think you know like thinking back to when I did honors I was I was really really interested in biology biological sciences I didn't really have a clear idea of ecology or evolution but you know one thing leads to the next thing leads to the next thing and you can grow into it so uh, i just i would recommend not sort of wringing your hands too much about finding that one one thing that's really gonna gonna grab you and um you know staying with what you're interested in and what you value and, and letting it develop if you know what i mean yeah thanks that's really helpful i feel like there's a lot of um different 
like advice and people are like, you know, like I always knew I wanted to do this and uh, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And I think it probably puts too much pressure mm-hmm. because much you know, pressure. I really okay. like all aspects of ecology and I like evolutionary biology too. Mm-hmm. And sort of deciding to um, kind of narrow that down to one sort of project is a bit overwhelming. Yeah, so, yeah that's right. I'll, I'll look into all the different um, things. But, yeah, thank you. It's really mm-hmm. helpful. Well, one important consideration regarding careers is that the prediction for your generation is that you are going to have not one career. You are probably are going to be switching between different professions. You are going to have a professional pathway that is going to take you in rather unexpected way. And that makes really very important that you develop skills that are transferable between different types of activities, research, you know, NGOs and whatnot, but also that you develop the ability to learn and the ability to retrain yourself. In, I think that for your generation, the idea that you start a career now and you work for four years in that career is not going to happen. It's going to be you retraining in about 10 years or 15 years after honors and taking a different direction and, and then again. Okay, thank you. Now, I think this conversation about mm-hmm. cementing a career or an academic pathway based on an honors project, it's, 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 a, it's a really helpful one. And, and I know that from my own experience, my career has turned in different ways and, and it's quite different to what I started my initial projects on, both in terms of what I work on, the tools I use and the spatial scales at which I work also. So really the honors project, and I think all three of us have really tried to emphasize this, it's about giving you an opportunity to understand research and to hone your potential research skills. It's not so much about the project itself, whether it's on that community or that species you thought you would always work on. You don't need to know what the future is or who future you is to focus on just acquiring those core skills that will, that you know will be transferable. Can we get another question? So we have we have the time. We've got another fifteen minutes or so. So it'd be lovely to hear what you're thinking. Mm. I was just wondering, other than the expression of interest, what steps do we have to take to be eligible for honours? Because I was I've been told that GPA can matter, and then other times I've been told that it's not that important, and I'm just sort of it's kind of vague to me hey, do you mind taking this one it's a credit average for entry into honors and other than just the credit average is there any other sort of specific things we have to have you would want the support of the supervisor so to have had that conversation um just all right so it's just sort of about making relationships and like talking to people who know what they're doing i think i think that's that's a really important one and i think that's that's the great thing about honors because you get a dialogue you can start a dialogue with one of the academics at the university and you can start to work through ideas and and then you can also see what several academics are doing and as kate said most people go and they they speak to multiple potential supervisors about their research lines research ideas for honours, but more generally, you know, what are they doing their research? What are the big things that they like to, to focus on and study? And, and then how do they run their groups? And you can talk about all those sorts of things. How would you actually fit if you did your honours with them into the lab fabric? And, and I think that's just great experience. Even if you find that you don't push on and do an honours, I think it's a really good experience for you to see how research is done at the departmental level. Awesome, thank. You. Oh, sorry, I just it's, it's just a, it, I, something I've really noticed over the years is the best students coming out of third year don't always make the best honor students, and the worst students 
don't always make, you know, the, the students with the lower grades in third year don't make the, the lower graded. Uh, I, I don't think we should be focused on, on grades, but what I'm trying to say is um, being, the skills you need to be good at research aren't always uh, predictable. So uh, you can have not had a particularly stellar academic career so far and, uh, and be absolutely outstanding in honors. I've seen it happen. Um, and it's usually because um, that student, you know, finds the opportunity of being independent and um, driving their own research and the excitement of discovery that that pushes them forward and they excel in it so it's um yeah i think that's true for research in general i don't think you need to be the smartest person in the room you need to be hard working and dedicated and curious and interested and if you've got all those skills, then you can really do an honours and become a researcher or both at an academic institution or outside of an academic institution. Yeah. I sort of give myself a hard time, oh, I did in the past, thinking I, was, I wasn't a good undergraduate um, because I didn't study well. I would be interested in some areas of a course and I would study for those things because they were interesting to me and I would ignore other stuff that wasn't interesting. And I, and so, and I wouldn't come out with particularly good grades. And I sort of used to berate myself thinking I wasn't a good student, but now it occurred to me that, you know, we focus far too much on grades and strategizing to get, to get good grades. Whereas actually maybe my, my motivation was right in that I was interested in the learning in, in the, you know, the, the subject areas that excited me rather than um, the, you know, the, the final grade. I think we're far too focused on, on grades and not on learning experiences and career skills. And we do it, we continue, you know, as academics in our careers because we obsess over impact factors and citations. You know, we have these, always have these metrics for, for judging ourselves rather than, than thinking about, you know, what is really valuable, which is uh, the skills and the knowledge and um, collaboration. Is that a small rant? Sorry. I mean, that was excellent. So we must have another question after that, please. Yeah, please. Someone change the subject. <laughs> I have a question about what happens at the end of honours. Like, what do you do after your honours? Can you go on to do a PhD or something like that? And how does that work? So, I mean, the world's your oyster after honours. So you can, uh, yes, you can potentially go and do a PhD and apply for a scholarship. If you get a first class honours, you'll be, you'll be really in the running to go and get a scholarship. But you're not limited to, to working at a university or doing a PhD. So, of course, you can use this as an opportunity to apply for jobs. And, I mean, we know that people are now looking in, in the Department of Environment and Water, etc., are looking at candidates coming out of the University of Adelaide with honours. Because they know that they've gone through the next steps of tuition and their skills have been honed. So their technical skills, their writing skills. So the, the thing, traditionally, maybe yes, you would have done an honours to do a PhD. And that still is an opportunity for you, of course. But for those who are also interested in doing things outside of research at a university, there's great opportunities in the workforce also. Does that answer your question, Amelia? Really? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Are you, is Hope talking? He's muted. Thank you. I, I was going to point out that um, for many jobs in, in environmental areas, honors is a starting level. Um, the other point is that even if you get uh, a, a position without honors, usually your progression through um, the, the levels and, and the promotions are much faster if you have honors. Yeah, th there is a question from um, separate grade now that's answered already. Yeah. Just a question about the um, the honours projects that are listed on the site. I noticed that the date they were posted was January 2019, 
So all those projects um, were likely to be things that people have done this year and that hasn't been, oh, sorry, not this year. Yeah, either um, last year or this year and hasn't been updated or are they sort of ones that people haven't taken yet? I can have a shot at this and I talk from experience. So the projects that we have in our lab, they're really outdated and it's mainly, I just haven't had time to update the projects that we've got going at the moment for honours. So again, I would look at them as themes. Some of them, yeah, they may not be filled, but think about the theme of that that's, that the researcher is focusing on in that project and then inquire based on that. And yeah, you might be right, the, the project may be available or a different element of that project may be available, but you really need to touch base with the, with the supervisor to find out one, if they've filled it, two, if, they're, if they've got something else which is, which is related, and three, just to talk about their research more generally. Okay, thank you. Do we have another one or two questions? Uh, people are asking about information around honours scholarships themselves. I'm probably not the best one to answer that. I know that there's one or two scholarships that are extremely competitive, but that's all I know. Okay, do you want to have a go at this one, just based on your experience? There are a few around, but usually there are small scholarships. Um, some supervisors may have access to some scholarships but they are not very common. They are not very common. There's one from um, ABRS in taxonomy. It's the only one I know of. Let's see. Uh, someone's asking you whether you should go through and, and touch base with more than one supervisor if they if they've already expressed interest in supervising you for a project uh, I don't think that you need to not as long as, as long as that you're happy with the project you're happy with the supervisor you believe that you can work well with the supervisor you're curious you're very motivated with the project and and the lab environment then no you don't need to it's not a must because once you've got your offer, you can always change supervisor anyway. You're not locked in. You won't lose your place if you change your supervisor. So our next step at the moment, that's just doing some research, finding what topics we're interested in, then contacting supervisors. And then do you need to, how do you apply? for it exactly, like what's the cutoff date and everything? There's a link here. I'll paste it again um, for expressions of interest. I think mid-year, um, you've got until, I think it's the middle of this month only, to put in the expression of interest and then the offers go out for starting towards the end of June, at uh, the end of July. So, yeah, 13th of July, I yeah. think the offers are made. Right, yeah, it's, it's a very short period between the offers and the actual start at the end of July. That's, yeah, very short term. So like if we're looking into next year, we can leave it for a bit and like talk to super. So we've got plenty of time to do our research. Yeah, and you've got plenty of time, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and take that time also. To really speak and scope out the project before if you're thinking for next year you can put in that expression of interest much later in the year but i think what we're saying is that touch base with the potential supervisor early on in second semester discuss your ideas make sure that you can work that you think you'll be able to work well together and and then you can move towards that expression of interest cool thank you
is there a resource or list somewhere that um, tells you who are possible supervisors within different schools? Yeah, there is. I don't, Kate, have you sent that through on the chat list or not? I can quickly do that. Um, I'll... I've, I've got it right here if you want me to do it. Right, if you've got it in front yeah, of you. Yeah, I do. Yep. It's, it's two seconds. It's yeah, no, set. there is. And you can work through and it'll at least, as, as we said earlier, it's not all that up to date, but it'll give you an understanding of, of who's doing what within the department. Now, I've just sent it through now. Yeah, so it's the um, search honours projects at the bottom of that page. Oh, here it is, yeah. Ellen's this, sorry. Does this uh, cover researchers in the marine biology field at all? Yeah, yeah, no, it does. Do. Yeah. Um, so if you select research areas, and go ecology, environmental science, you should find the marine ecologists in there. Yeah. So I'll add another link. There you are. Is that what you're after, Anthony? You Yeah, that's taken me to the ecology. Yeah, so I'll have a look. I'll be able to find. Yeah, if you, if you, yeah, that's that's the first page, but the multiple pages. Um, so if you scroll through, you'll find the marine within there. I think. Yeah, I'll I'll figure it out. Thank you. I've just got another question about. Um, so there's, I noticed that there's these two types of honours. There's the disciplinary research pathway and professional skills. Um, and I was just wondering what, so clearly like the research based ones are what you guys talked about, but what would you, what kinds of things do people do in the professional skills pathway and what sort of um, careers do they think about? Hope, do you have any experience here? I know it's extremely uh, new. It's the, yeah. I have yeah, not there, had. there are very few students doing that. The idea is that you would be doing something that there are different pathways, um, science communication, innovation, and essentially you do more workshop style courses, mm -hmm. and then your research project is something more general. Um, comes to mind things, it could be, for example, the attitudes of people to labeling of um, environmentally uh, friendly products or how people learn about the environment, that kind of things in terms of, um, because an, an, another pathway is science education. So my personal view, is that there are some disadvantages to that uh, model because you don't get to interact as closely with one supervisor and one laboratory that I think is, is one of the great things of honors, the ability, the, the immersion in a research environment. And you don't get that as much as in the regular honors. But yeah, the projects are general science in, and society type of projects, I would say. Okay, thank you. We probably have time for one more question. Helen has a question in the chat that hasn't been answered. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we've got, um, yeah, has principles and practices of research three had an impact on previous students? I don't know that I've spoken to a previous student that's done that course or have been aware that they've done that course. Do you teach into that, Damien, or? No. No. 
So I think the answer is no, it hasn't had an impact. Not that we know. Yeah. I think that would be more um, Phil Cassie's. That's Phil. He's the one that runs that, I'm pretty sure. Right, so it has had an impact then in that Phil has very large numbers of honor students. Yeah. So he must have inspired them, um, perhaps in that course and elsewhere. I know two people who have done it and both of them have ended up doing honors with their supervisor for that, that topic. Okay, right, well that's good. Hmm. Okay, should we do a quick recap? on I think the main things to take out of it. Uh, one of them is that honours is more than just the project. And I think we've really tried to emphasise that. Uh, the honours year, you develop many, many skills. So don't only focus on the project. And I think Hope's example, if you want to work on sharks and you end up working on guppies is brilliant. Uh, and it really says it all. Um, the other one we've really tried to emphasise is speaking to supervisors early. And that's really, really important. It's important for you to make sure that you, if, if that's the person you, who's taught you or lectured you through your, your undergrad career and you've worked out, you really want to work with that person, get in early, talk to them and see if there's a project where you, you both can, can uh, see eye to eye and, and, and have personal interests. So I, th I think that's the other really big one. And, and one other one is please don't apply without speaking to a supervisor. Don't get on the web, see a project, think that project's for me, but then not but then don't without doing the face-to-face -face contact with that supervisor. So in my mind, they're really the three big things. Uh, and, and also I think it's the, what we didn't emphasize is that the honors year can be a loads of it can be loads of fun and a real development uh, year for you in terms of being immersed in, in a research group. And, and I suppose taking a bit, of, a bit more leadership than what you have in your other undergrad subjects. Uh, does anyone else would like to add on to that and any um, take home messages? I think that's, that covers it really well. I can, I can quickly, Jenny, I see. I see you've got a question here. I, I think you're saying that you're finishing not till next year sometime. Uh, no, it's probably not worth contacting a supervisor yet, uh, but start thinking about your desires and, and what you'd like to do in an honours project and potentially talk to other honours students. You've got plenty of time. Okay, so thank you very much everyone for your time and uh, it's wonderful to sort of meet you virtually and, and, and hopefully we'll be uh, meeting face to face either for some of you it might even be next semester for others next year. Um, stay safe and hopefully we'll get you back onto campus at some stage. <laughs> yeah. And you know where to find We owe you pizza because usually we do this with pizza and drinks so <laughs> make sure when we start honours and they are face to face you reclaim your right to a pizza. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And like I say, stay safe. And we look forward to meeting you at the end of this year, next year. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.